Hey, hey. Wait. Okay, now I can hear you. Wait, no, nope, I can't hear you. Why can I hear you? Can you hear me? Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hey, how are you today? Good. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I can't hear you, Alicia. Oh, there we go. Cool. Oh. No, I don't, I don't think we can hear uh, Alicia. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see what's happening. I'm Jen, by the way. Hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. You too. Sorry, I'm trying to see, see what's happening. It's all good. She, it's, it's like she's a lassie and we're trying to understand what she's trying to say to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 she's trying to talk, but I, we, can't, we can't hear you. <laughs> I think she needs help. I know. What's <laughs> happening? Use your phone. Talk to me on the phone. <laughs> there we go. Ah, uh, there we go. Hello. Oh, there we go. Hey. Hey. So for whatever reason, how I was doing my microphone wasn't allowing you guys to hear me. Can you hear me now? And do I sound okay? Yes. 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 Perfect. <laughs> okay is a relative term. Um, so Ryan, what we're going to do is Ben and I will do our typical intro and then we're okay. going to intro you. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Okay, and Jen, you know what we always do. Do you want to start or you want me to start? You can start it. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Horror and Heels. I'm your host, Alicia Messier. And I'm your other host, Jen Driver. And today, we actually have a very special guest. I know we told you all we'd be doing House of Wax this week. But when the awesome Ryan Kruger asks if he can be on your podcast, you change up your order. So this week, you're... <laughs> hearing Ryan Kruger speak to us. He is the mastermind behind Fried Barry. He Yay. is from South Africa, and that's him saying hi now. So, Ryan, say hello. Tell them a little bit about yourselves. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, well, I'm based in South Africa. Uh, I just finished my uh, first feature film, uh, Fried Barry. That's on the festival circuit at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's been going really good. A lot of feedback and uh, just getting a lot of press uh, recently. I've been doing like uh, two to three interviews per day for the past like four weeks, and like the other day I did six. So it's been uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a really good uh, journey so far, and it's just like spreading the word. But uh, yeah, so far the reviews and everything has been just awesome, and I think uh, playing at a Fantasia. Uh, this year has been a yeah, it's been a dream. It's been it's been awesome. And um, so it's in the circuits now. And when will it hit theaters, mainstream, etc.? So yeah, right right now, uh, from now to the end of the year, it's uh, hitting a lot of major festivals uh, around the world. And then only on next year, uh, then it's then it will be like a cinema release in uh, certain countries and uh, DVD and Blu-ray as well next year and oh. online, online platforms. So okay. cool. Jen and I have every online platform, literally yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Jen was so, so she got a little nervous. She's like, 
oh shit, that's today, and I haven't watched the movie. I, like, I don't like, know what we're watching. <laughs> sweet, eight. We can't watch it yet. We're not industry people yet. We will uh, be yeah. one with this podcast. We will be, but not yet. So we gotta wait. I'm sorry. I so, feel like that. Where, like, where, where are you guys based? I'm in LA, which is okay, the United cool. States, California. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there is there, there is a it is playing at I'll tell you now. It is playing at the Mile High Horror uh film festival on Sept- I think it's from September the 24th to October the 4th. Where is that? Is that in LA? Uh well it's it's going to be online. I'm pretty sure it's going to be online festival so Oh, if it's, oh if yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the two of us were like, um, Ryan, we're like still not really allowed to leave our house. <laughs> we don't have to film. I was like, I totally forgot. I was like, I can go? Cool. You, you, All right. You're going nowhere. Just keep drinking at Just home. Just staying home. Okay. <laughs> oh, DWIs in this country are going. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, so, Ryan, how did the idea for Fried Barry come about? What was like your process with that um well to be honest it started originally i made in 2017 i made a three minute experimental film called fry barry which was just about a drug addict heroin addict uh, in an abandoned building off his head on drugs through his highs and his lows and it was a standalone uh short experimental film uh, but that went to a lot of major festivals. It had nothing to do with aliens or anything like that. It was just uh, a guy off his head on drugs. Uh, but it, we we played it at uh, about 60 fest- festivals around the world. We picked up about uh, 13 awards. And randomly, we started to get all this fan art from all around the world, just people sketching uh, Fry Barry character. Uh, so from there... We never, you know, we never ever planned to make a feature film ever. It was just, it was just a standalone short. Uh, and then as, as time went on, um, you know, I looked at all that fan art and I knew it was onto something cool, but I still looked at it as a standalone short film that just did really well. And so where I was at the time with my career and my personal life, I, uh, in a nutshell, I went through like uh, quite a hard time a few years ago. Uh, I had something wrong with my kidney. I had an operation. I got sepsis. Uh, I went through a breakup. Uh, my cat got cancer, went into depression, went down this long, dark hole. And, um, and from there, I was just like, I just hit rock bottom. And I was like, what is at the top of my list that I've always wanted to do in life? And it was to make a feature film. So I have all these other scripts lying about and it probably would have been way easier if I made these other films, but then I just got this idea and it had to be, you know, the right story, uh, the right character and the right way to make it. Uh, when I got the idea, uh, you see our lead guy in the movie isn't a trained actor. So again, it had to be the, you know, the right way to make it and the right character so I know that this guy can uh, pull it off. So when I got the idea, I was like, this is perfect. This is this will 100% work. And because uh, our lead guy, he, he's normally uh, he's normally extra in like movies and uh, TV and stuff like that. He's just normally in the background. But I've known the guy for about uh, 11 years. So in three days, I wrote a, a scene breakdown, a brief scene breakdown, which was just Barry does this, Barry does that. And then I wrote about six pieces of uh, dialogue for uh, for the main bits in, in the movie. And we shot over a year and a half. Uh, we shot 28 days over a year and a half. And yeah, and it was just one of those things where because of uh, the lead guy, you know, I didn't want him to over overthink things or, you know, like he didn't know what we were doing until we were, you know, on set, on the day. And 95% of the movie was like improvised and workshopped uh, with all the actors on set. So it was still planned and, and, you know, executed the way we wanted it, but we were, there was a hell of a lot of improv where we could come out with these ideas and go, cool, let's, let's do this and let's do that. Uh, but the thing is with uh, Gary Green, our lead actor, 
Um, as I said, because he's not a trained actor, I had to work with him very closely. And he was the only one that didn't do the improv where I just had to work super well with him and mold the movie around him uh, to make it work and make it perfect. But at the same time, he is the, like the perfect guy for the job. Like nobody could have done it better because he's just got it such a interesting look and nobody looks like him. And he, he, it's, it was just a perfect, you know, uh, perfect casting and idea for, for him to be able to, you know, pull off this lead in a, in a feature film. And how did casting him, like you said, you knew him. Did you know in your head, like when you were writing Barry, that that's who you wanted to play Barry? Or did you? Did yeah, yeah. Well, that, like I said, so there, there was no major, there was, there's no script for the movie. There was just, right. uh, you know, there was just a scene breakdown. And, and I knew if I was going to, because of the, uh, the people liking the short, I thought, how could I turn this non-story experimental into a feature? And then that's where, you know, with the feature, it's about a heroin addict that gets abducted by aliens. And then, you know, the alien takes over his body, spat back out. And it's basically an alien tourist on holiday, walking through Cape Town, going to the, you know, the dark side of Cape Town, meeting all these different characters and, it's almost like a road movie, you know, instead of the, uh, you know, the car, like Barry's the car and we're meeting all these oh, characters wow. uh, as, as we go along. So I knew straight away that, you know, with the idea that I got, you know, Bar you know, Gary Green has to, has to play Fry Barry without a doubt, but it had to be completely right. You know, the, 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 the story and, and so, you know, so he doesn't have to have a lot of dialogue and this and that. So, and it just worked. It just fell into place. And all the other actors in the movie, they were, um, you know, I've worked with a, a lot. I've worked with like probably about 95% of the, of the cast uh, before. There was a few actors that I hadn't worked with. But even with Gary, I've worked with Gary for probably about 11 years. He's been extra, uh, extra in a lot of my stuff and, and featured in, in, you know, video, music videos and stuff that I've done. So it was just a, uh, you know, and even the rest of the cast, nobody auditioned for the film. It was like, I'm going to take this actor. I know what he's done. I know what he's capable of. He would be perfect in this role. And it, it just went on like that with the casting. And did you always know that you would play Danny B or did that come during filming? Yeah, yeah, no, that came, that, that, that came during filming. So it's, uh, as I said, as, as the movie went on, the movie developed and ideas you know, there were some characters that we that we said, uh, oh, we, we wrapped them. And then later on, we were like, oh, we've got a great idea. Let's bring this character back. So my DOP played a small role in it. My producer played a small role in it. And then it got up to me and I was going to play this one character. And I just wanted to concentrate on directing. And then my producer, James C. Williamson, and my DOP, uh, Gareth Place, they were like, oh, you've got you've to do a part in it. And I was like, sure, I don't know. And then I ended up playing a small role, playing the, the character Danny B. That's awesome. Okay. Um, what would you say while filming was the biggest change to your overall storyboard that you had to make? Um, the, the way I made this film, it, it, it was very, I didn't run into any of those type of problems. Oh, because it was, such an orga it was such an organic way to make this film. Like, you know, like normal films, you've got the script, it's set in stone. The, you know, the only way you're going to make a difference is if the director directs it differently or the actor, you know, acts it out differently. So it was, it was one of those things where it, the design of the movie had to be made a certain way. Otherwise, it would just fall flat. So er everything was... Everything was a challenge in a, in a sense of it was, you know, thinking on the spot. And uh, so even though the brief breakdown might have said, uh, Barry goes to a supermarket, uh, goes to the, meets, speaks to the checkout girl, and then also uh, a person offers him like one of those like free tasters, you know, like a, um, what do you call it? You know, like a free uh, food taster in the store. Sample, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, uh, like a sample thing. And that was how brief it was 
So then on set, it was like, okay, this character can do this and that character can do that. But it was that organic way of being in the moment with these actors and workshopping it so we could find that like magic and find those really good ideas. Because normally when you're on a normal set, it, everything's in set and concrete. We know what we're doing. It, you know, we have to do this and there's a script supervisor and all that. And the studio knows what you're making and everything. So everything has to be done the way it is on the script. So with this type of film, it was cool because me and my producer, we didn't have to answer to anybody. We shot it the way we wanted to shoot it. We made the movie that we wanted to make. And being in that organic moment with those actors on set and coming up with those ideas was was great. And that's why it was it was a great challenge, but it was the only way to make this type of movie. Gosh. Would, you, would you say that that was an easier process? Like, was it easier kind of improving and doing it on the fly than having the structured system of a script? Um, I mean, obviously, a script, it's, it's not the easiest way to, to definitely to make a movie, but it was right. It was right for what we were doing and how we were making it. But uh, saying that as well, like where I was at the time and, and what I needed you know, at the time is, to, you know, to make a feature film. And as I said, I could have made any of those other scripts that I already had that was, would have been way easier to make. But when I got that idea, I was like, this is the one, you know, I just knew like, this is the one that I should make. This is the one that people will speak about. Uh, this is the one that there's no way people cannot speak about this type of uh, film. And it just felt right. So it was one of those things where it, it worked and it felt right. And I knew straight away that that um, it's gonna be a challenge to do, but for where I was at the time, I needed to be super creative. It needed to be, it's like when somebody makes a movie, they say, oh, it's gotta be good. I mean, it's a, such a un, understatement. Like when you make your first feature, it has to be the best film that you've ever made. Otherwise, what are you doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I felt that when we were on set, and many actors said it as well, was like, there's something about this movie. I don't know what it is, but there's something about it. And I was like, what is it? And they're like, I don't know, but there's something really good about <laughs> this thing. film. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's what was cool about it. And, and that's what, you know, it, 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 you know, it was great to, to wake up and be like, okay, we kind of know what we're doing, but we kind of don't know what we're doing. And it was just, and, but like I said, everything was still, planned so it's not like we would rock up and set and not know at all what we were doing we you know we would plan for the stuff that we would need whether it's the supermarket the props yeah. and this and that but then you know we had the subjects in the scene so it would be like cool how could this work out how kind of like we... an outline yeah yeah and it's kind of outlined but it's great to to be in that moment and to be think like you know when barry's the alien it's just like you know, in the supermarket, then I was thought, you know, you know, what happens when you're a kid in the supermarket? Your mom always like wanders off or you wander off and you're like, oh, shit, and you can't find your mom or your dad. And it was very much like that. And then it was like, OK, and then the first thing that will happen will be the uh, the food sampler. And then it will be the, you know, the woman at the checkout. So it was all those things were already like lined up. It's just how, how you're going to use it and how you're going to do it. And even with that, like when we filmed the checkout girl, we did it a certain way. And then I got an idea and I was like, you know what? Forget this, we should actually do it like this. And it was completely different, but it was better. And it was, as soon as we called Cook, we were all laughing our heads off and like, this is the one. We knew that, you know, this is the right way uh, to play it. So with Fried Barry, even though it's, you know, it has those horror elements, it has those sci-fi elements, it has a lot of dark, twisted uh, comedy humor. And there's like, even like a love story in there as well. So it's got a bit, it's just a crazy, wacky, movie and it's it's designed to make you feel uncomfortable it's designed to be unpredictable what's going to happen uh, it's it, it's the type of film where you can't go to the toilet or go grab a drink and come back because you'll be like what the fuck is going on like how, how did he get here so Ryan, uh, yeah, so, Ryan yeah. I am a mother of a two-year-old what that has done to my bladder I'm <laughs> I can, I, 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 how long is the runtime on this? What are you trying to tell me? Is this an Avengers situation where I have to wait till I can watch it online because I can't? can't hold it? What's the situation? What are we working at? Okay, so I'm going to sort all your problems out. 
what you need is a tablet. You can take it with you to the toilet. You can take it, <laughs> you can take also, it anywhere. Also, aren't we going to be in the age of pausing it? Can't we pause it now? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I, what's the runtime? Because in the theater, I can make it two hours. We go hit two hours, I have to watch it at home. Yeah, it's it's under two hours. You're gonna be all right. Oh, I'm good. Then. I'm good. Hour forty. You're good. Yeah, I can oh, see it's an hour forty. You're that good. That seems a respectable amount of time. I love a ninety to two hour. I'm not a fan of. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate <laughs> that time frame. I'll, I'll I'll send you a tablet in the post and a nappy. <laughs> The few which one you want to use. No, I, I, I have plenty. Two year old. Ryan, what part of Cape Town was your favorite to shoot in? Um, well, this is the interesting thing. So the thing is with Fry Barry. So so normally in South Africa, we're, we're, we have an industry. It's small, but it's getting bigger. But we're a service country. So we have a lot of overseas movies getting shot here like all the time, like TV series and movies. So Cape Town is doubled for a lot of different countries where it's might be this country, it's might be that country. And Cape Town's are like, it's a really beautiful place. But what we wanted to do with Fry Barry is to show Cape Town like you've never seen it before. So we we shot like the darker side of Cape Town, the the, the locations that people don't normally see when they shoot here so we made it gritty and dark under under flyovers and stuff like that um but the some of the locations in the movie were, that were my favorite uh we filmed at the old christian barnard uh, abandoned hospital uh, a lot of shoots do actually happen in there it's just a normal layout of a hospital but mm -hmm. it's it was a great um you know with the inspiration of uh you know stuff like uh one flew of the cuckoo's nest and stuff like that. It was just, it was just a great location with long corridors where we could do all this crazy long shots and stuff like that. And have the inside the mental institute when they like break out and stuff like that. So I think that was one of my uh, favorite uh, locations. And then there was a, there was another one uh, in Maitland in Cape Town where it was an older uh, uh, avatar. So it was just like this old broken down, huge, huge building but it was one of those where we didn't have to dress it too much because the walls and the textures were just, was just already there. So it was just like, we brought a few props and stuff like that, but all the walls and the textures and the old concrete and everything just looked like it looked amazing. I mean, when we were shooting there, the next day we left, uh, Ridley Scott was busy there the next day shooting uh, uh, his TV series there. So, which was, which was pretty cool. That's I do awesome. apologize because my knowledge of Cape Town in South Africa is whatever my good friend shares on me, shares with me every year when he goes down there to swim with your great white sharks because he's a crazy person. <laughs> and, uh, don't worry, I have a very nice insurance policy out on him. <laughs> um, now, so you shot 28 days over a year and a half. Did any of them back up into this COVID situation? And did that affect um, any post-production or anything, the COVID? No, no we, we were very lucky. We, we actually finished and post, basically, uh, there was a few tweaks that we had to do with sound uh, that we did extra during, uh, I mean, like, put it this way, we, we, we finished the movie before, uh, you know, before lockdown or anything happened. And we already oh, had... Good. We already had our uh, world premiere at CineQuest in uh, San Jose. So uh -huh. we went there and it was literally, it was just as as, as uh, uh, COVID hit, we like the next day or a few days later, we like, we, we left San Jose. So, so yeah, we just missed that. But during lockdown, we, you know, we wanted to fix uh, a bit of the sound here and there. And we went back like quite a few weeks uh, back and just, just made it that extra little bit better. But already now, I mean, we've already had like quite a few festival runs already of, of the movie. And uh, so every time we did make a change, we update, you know, the new, the, the new draft of uh, sound or picture or whatever. And now have those festivals been doing them uh, like remotely or have those been in-person festivals? And I saw that you won 
a bunch of awards at the festival. So if you'd like to just let the listeners know about those awards too, yeah, yes. uh, I find that exciting. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's been good. So, so starting with CineQuest at San Jose in March, just before uh, COVID-19 hit, uh, while we were at CineQuest, we also had the South African premiere in Johannesburg. So we picked up, uh, we had five nominations and we picked up uh, Best South African Film, Best Editor, uh, Best Cinematography. And then we, uh, we got Best Actor in Brazil at Fantas Poa. And then in Macabro in Mexico, we won uh, Best International Film. And so, yeah, so it's been hitting, uh, you know, it's been hitting all these festivals, but some of, some of the festivals have been, obviously since this COVID-19 thing, majority of them are, is online. I mean, at Fantasia, it would have been amazing to go to Fantasia and be there for that. I mean, that's like one of the biggest genre film festivals in the world. So it would have been awesome to go there. But I think this whole thing has been, for the filmmakers, has been like a blessing in disguise because when you're looking at a normal film festival, and don't get me wrong, it would be great to go there, meet the people, do the whole Q&A and all that would be great. But, you know, you're, you're looking at 250 to 300 people per movie screen, okay, at a normal festival. Uh, and, and that's if they, you know, screen the movie more than once or twice, you know, you, you're looking at 250 to 300 people per screen. But now because of the cover, uh, because of the Corona and all that, then, you know, there's some cinemas around the world that say we can only have 50 people in per screen, which is fucking nothing. So then what has been good about it is that the festivals that have been online, it's been great because, you know, there's those certain people in the, in the country that can't go to that festival because it's too far away or this or that. So because it's been online, for example, at Francis Poe, we had 4,000 people watch the movie. So normally you get in 250 to 300 and now we got 4,000 people. And then in Mexico, it must be nearly the, the same numbers and same with uh, Fantasia. So it's definitely for a filmmaker, for people to see the movie and to watch the movie uh it's anybody in that country can go watch it so yeah. that's i think that's the great thing about it which creates more of a buzz more people speaking about it more people talking about it online so it's definitely i think it's definitely a blessing in disguise that it's that it's yeah. that it's been like this and i think future festivals should actually think about um you know, doing a you know doing their normal festival so people can go to the cinema, but also they should they should uh, I think they should have the online option as well, just yeah. for people that can't make it because yeah. even at a film festival you can't watch all the films anyway. Yeah. You know, you know it's impossible to try and watch like all of them. So I think it's a good thing, and the festivals will probably make more money anyway out of it. So I think it's a good thing yeah, to even like just from there are a lot of people who aren't great with crowds in this world. Yes. And so just avoid things like that just for that reason. And I think it would be great to be able to open it up yeah. to people who... Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, that's why I'm saying it's, it, yeah. and that's why I'm saying it's always... Sometimes people can't always, you know, make it or it's too far and they want to go or it costs money... To, you know, to, to go up there, stay there for a night or, you know, yeah. stay there for the day. So to, to be able to watch it online, to have that option, I think it's a, I think it's a great thing for yeah, the festival like, and for Like an integration, not like we're, oh, now it's all online. Because some people, you know, there's both. There's people who want to go yeah, and then, or, yeah, yeah, and exactly. you can see more things because of the yeah. limit of capacity. Then it's like, oh, well, I'll make sure I go see this in the theater with everyone. But then this movie I can watch in my hotel room, like. That would yeah, be really exactly. cool. I think I, I think it's a great I think it's a great idea, and I think I think a lot of festivals should uh, you know take a look at it. I mean, at the end of the day, you make a movie, you want people to watch it. So I mean, it's it's uh, yes. perfect. And the and the and the festivals will if they do that, they'll they they probably will make more money as well by doing that as well. Yeah. So you could do merchandise yeah. online and all that stuff, and yeah. you know yeah, have yeah, your. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's Gun a definite has a shopping problem. I do have a shopping oh, problem. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> um let's see, what was I gonna say? 
Oh, I forgot. Oh, so, we have a long list of questions that Ryan kind of answered as he was speaking. Yeah, he yeah, answered all the questions. <laughs> I just throw all the information out there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's oh, perfect. Man has been doing six interviews a day. He knows what we're gonna ask. Yeah, he's like, don't, don't even bother to ask. It's fine. I got it. I got it. Um, so, how did you go about picking your production team? Are these people that you've worked with in the past? Um, did you have like a wish list of people, and then just kind of cold from there and saw what happened, or what? Um. So. A lot of people, like a lot, of, like I said before, a lot of the actors and uh, and crew I've worked with uh, many times uh, before. There was a handful of crew and a handful of actors that I hadn't worked with before or knew their work. But um, because we shot it over a year and a half, you know, we on you know on certain days when we were shooting, we had like you know new crew members. The, the HODs were always there. But we had, you know, like other camera assistants and uh, and stuff like that. So the crew actually changed quite a bit, you know, over, over the time with different assistants and different makeup artists and uh, and stuff like that. So it was uh, people that I've, I know or people that I've worked with before or people that I've recommended or certain people that we needed for certain things on certain uh, certain days. But uh, it was cool. It's like a nice, big, happy, you know, family that we had. It was... I think make, making a film is is always, I think what people, some people forget, it. you know, it's a collaboration. You know, you're working with a team of people and I surround myself with people that I admire and people that I like and oh, people hey. that I, I, I love their work. So it's it's nice to surround yourself with, you know, the people that are really good at what they do. And even like, I look at my film, I'm like, oh, I love, I love this film. I love my own film because I admire, you know, those actors that are in it and I love, and you know, I love you know, I love watching them. So, them doing work in my film, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, they did such an amazing job. And and whether it's uh, even with the music, uh, I mean, the guy that made the music is a big DJ, uh, electronic DJ here called uh, Hazer, and Hazer was just amazing. Like I've worked with him many times uh, before on experimental films, but it was so important to to get the right tone of the film and the music's almost like a character in the movie. It's, it, you know, it's like, if you look at movies like Blade Runner or something like that, and you take away like Vangelis of the, of the soundtrack, it just wouldn't be the same. So Hazer really made that music and the score of the movie just perfect. And it's so many people have like spoke about the music as well. And it's such a, it's such a big part of the, the movie. So it was an absolute pleasure to work with all these amazing, talented, uh, people and and also it's that trust and and you admire their work so I mean it's it's a it's there's nothing better having a like a great team where people there's no there's no uh, hierarchy there's no you know there's no people bossing anybody about and and that's what it is like when you work on these like big film sets and stuff like that it's everybody's so scared in case they do something wrong and somebody will be like who did this and they'll be like it was him and they'll just blame it on somebody and throw yeah. you under the bus and I think the thing is what I've always maintained is having a good friendly crew where everybody gets along with everybody. And no matter if you're the PA or the DP or whoever, that, you know, everybody's treated the same and everybody, we're there to have fun. This is what we yeah. love doing. This is right. why we do right. what we do. And I think that's the biggest, most important thing that I think a lot of filmmakers forget. And yes, it's work. And yes, it's, it, it's still a business at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, we do this because we love it. And we, yeah. we, we you know, we're, we surround each other with, with people that are passionate and, and you know, they want to be there and they, they you know, they want to be involved in this film. And, and that's the thing. And it's, it's an important thing to happen. And it changes everything. Just, just saying everything that I said now, it, it changes everything. It changes the atmosphere. Everybody wants to work harder. Everybody wants to, improve the skills and i also like pushing people to be better and right. want to do better and you want to you know get them to step up and and you know show their skills off uh, more everybody's a team so everybody wants this exactly. project yeah i think everyone on a film set is equally important like you can't have the film without the crew you can't have the film without the cast 
there's no yeah. one person that's more important than another. You yeah. need every I mean, part. Even, ex, even, even the extras, they still, they, they're a big part of it. They, I, they create that little world that's going on, you know? I, I've done a lot of extra work. I feel pretty important when I do it, you know? I got to sit there and look like I'm drinking that coffee. I got to make it look real. Otherwise, they're going to be like, ah, I almost bought the scene, but that girl wasn't really drinking her coffee right, so. Yeah, no. but you, yeah, <laughs> you, you were really drinking the coffee there. Uh, like exactly, that. you know? <laughs> um... So the music that Hazer did, that's the same music that we hear in the, um, wow, wow, trailer. Thank you. <laughs> that's the word I was, because I really enjoyed the trailer music. I enjoyed the trailer overall. That was a trippy it trailer. a couple of times now. Yeah. I find it very, I think it's a very good trailer because it lets you know what to expect without knowing what to expect if that makes yeah, sense yeah. no no absolutely and it's it's designed you know to give you these visuals not really know what the fuck is going on or what it's about but it's like fuck i want to see that i don't you know what it's about it. but yeah, I, I, you're like, I gotta i gotta go find out what that was yeah, yeah. yeah. um so it's listed as a comedy horror sci-fi other than fried berry what would be your favorite comedy horror sci-fi movie uh fuck, i don't know do you, uh, do you know <laughs> i was trying to think of one at the top of my head uh, i have one because i i know i know of one that i could think of but that's also my favorite movie of all time so okay what what is it's, that uh, Shaun of the dead okay that's, Shaun of the dead. that's cool i was that, thinking zombie land but that's just because <laughs> i love jesse eyes <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a secret. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard one. You see, I love I love my eighties cinema. I love my oh, yeah, I yes. love my eighties films. So I love, you know, whether it's uh, Christine or oh the yeah, thing, or um, that's, that's or the fly. <laughs> or what? Or the the fly. Uh, oh, Goldberg. like like yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Ooh. Oh. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of other ones that would have like a because this is a very specific like that's three specific genres that don't usually go together: comedy, horror, and sci-fi. So yeah. it's kind of a. That's why I said it's a wacky movie. It's a yeah. crazy, it, it, it's crazy movie. Wacky here. We enjoy. Yeah. Wacky. We I like being scared and laughing. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Like the serious moments are serious, and then and then it's it's that like you know, that hint of uh, comedy here and there where it's funny. And sometimes it could be a serious moment, but it's like in the moment, it just, like it works. And then there's those moments where you laugh and you don't know if you should be laughing. Right, <laughs> right, certain... yeah. That's a hard yeah. balance. I like that. I'm excited. I can't wait to see it because that's, uh, that's always fun. Is it wrong that in Christine, I laugh every time the bullies get it? I just <laughs> crackle <laughs> the entire thing. I'm like, mm. Yeah, had yeah, it coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, Christine is a, it's a classic. It's such a classic movie. I'm one of my favorite that. books. It was one of my first by Oh him. yeah, she's a big Stephen King. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a great movie. And the soundtrack's amazing for that as well. Yes, a good soundtrack really makes or breaks, especially in horror. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like you just had all the stars aligned for Fried Berry with your cast, your crew, your music. You just kind of yeah. hit the jackpot. I, I think when you guys watch this movie, you'll be able to see, because of the contents and what's in the film, you'll be able to see we had a lot of fun making this film. That, you, that does, it comes out. When you can tell when a cast and a crew like actually love each other and like had fun and it was a passion project, that yeah. totally shows through the screen. Like You can tell there's love there and there's like fun and and that makes it fun for the people who are watching so i love when that kind yeah of like i know this is a tv show but i used to watch the good wife and they're the two main female actresses in the last two seasons didn't get along so bad that they couldn't even be filmed together oh, you shit. Tell, you see it and it definitely change the overall just it wasn't as fun to watch anymore yeah. and you could tell it was because there was contention on the set so i really i love to see a project that doesn't have that yeah. 
Yeah, there's, there's nothing worse. Like, I mean, every time I watch a movie now, I always check the trivia on IMDb. So I'm so just doing that. I'm just doing that. Very popular. So I'll, 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 busy, I'll busy watch a movie and I'll be checking the trivia. And it's sometimes it's so, it's so sad because sometimes it's like what you said now where they go, oh, these two actors fucking hated each other. And yeah. they had all these like um, kissing scenes or whatever. And you're like, oh, what? And they were so, some of them were actually, you, you know, on some of them you wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes you can tell, like you said, and then other times you wouldn't have guessed and you were like, oh, fuck. And it kind of makes you feel a little <laughs> like, bit disappointed. Oh. You're just like, oh, shit. <laughs> And you, you actually don't see the film in the same way because every time you watch it, you go, they fucking hate each other. Yeah, yeah. When you get to that part of the trivia, you just put your phone down like, well, I'm done looking up those facts. <laughs> well, yeah, Jen and I both said that when we found out that the shark, uh, not the shark, the snake in Friday the 13th was real, we got real sad. Yeah, they really killed, have, you, you know, you've seen Friday the 13th, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, the scene, yeah, they killed someone. And then the, the trivia said that the owner was actually on set and that's watched the snake get I killed. don't know. They said that's I, not confirmed. So. I'm hoping that's an urban legend because that's depressing. Yeah, um, the, it, it's also like, it's also like that, uh, and I don't think a lot of people know this, but it's on the trivia. So when, uh, so how, how old are you guys, if you don't mind me asking? So I'm 36. 37. Okay. Thirty. So, so, <laughs> so, no, so we're all we're all at the right age. So when we watched Never Ending Story when we were kids, you know, when the horse got stuck in the mud, everybody was like, "Oh, it's so sad," and everybody cried. Everybody was upset. But the interesting thing was, the sad thing was that horse actually died on set. So loads of people actually don't know that, but it Ryan. is on the. It is. On the <laughs> you are done, and this interview is over. <laughs> Cut I'm the sorry. cameras. We're <laughs> scrapping this entire episode. <laughs> we cannot just have that. Just like that. Just ruin each other. <laughs> it's already. De- oh my god. They. Oh, that's. That's still just his. Then the boy and his tears. I can't. Why would you bring me back there right now? Like we're talking about fun things, like cars killing people. So for the rest of you guys' lives. I'm just glad I've been day drinking since noon. Jeez. So the, so the next time you guys watch that, film, for that information? You're, you're gonna you're gonna be thinking about that, and you're gonna Holy be thinking shit. about me. You're gonna think about the horse that died uh, in the mall. I've seen I've seen, you know how Facebook gets you now with these little random ads. I've seen this ad for this planter. It's like planter sculptures, and you put them in two different plants, and one is of the boy trying to pull the horse, and then you put the horse in the other one, so it looks like him. Oh, you say okay. it was a tray, right? A tray was the yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. I always right. forget that. And then the horse, oh, God. That scene. Aww. That is just crushing. Oh, but then he's riding the horse at the end, so. Oh, yeah, they oh. filmed that at the beginning, probably, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Ryan! <laughs> Ryan! <laughs> they, they probably said, right, so we're, we're, the horse might die in that scene. So let's just throw oh, yeah, all, all the other yeah. stuff, uh, and then we'll shoot that scene last just in case. Yeah. They did it's the, like the if running scene. It's, it, it's basically the same as when they're gonna and they haven't got a lot of budget and they're gonna do a car chase they go <laughs> let's film everything else and then we'll fuck up the car and the car chase and then it's done and they're like okay cool yeah they're like no, they're like no, and that's a wrap for the horse <laughs> time to put him down oh what <laughs> Jen, in the description now we have to give a trigger warning <laughs> trigger warning never spoiler alert <laughs> Never thought I'd need that, really, honestly, <laughs> in my our podcast. I know. It's never Man, ending, it was never ending story even turning up here. <laughs> Maybe at the end of this video, you can put like a minute of silence for the whole thing. Oh, it's the Oh, no. Okay, I'm not that great at editing. There's probably a minute of silence on the oh, Yeah, there'll be a minute anyways. I'm sure we can <laughs> gather up a minute somewhere in here. Oh, man. Yeah. Brian, can you bring us back to something happy now? Uh, <laughs> I rode a horse when I was a kid, and it was a great Did horse. it die, too? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Did you kill it? <laughs> yeah, I killed it. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry about that. Just thought, it's thought, fine. I just thought it's this fine, interview needed you know? to end. It's 2020. I have done a downer, you know? <laughs> No, we're not ending now. Now we have to keep going till we can end it better. Personal note, do you have any kids that you had to juggle while filming or anything? 
Uh, no, no. I'm oh, a, I'm a, that I'm a, probably made that a lot that was, I, 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 I didn't have to deal with any kids. That was really horse. smooth, Alicia. Oh, really smooth. <laughs> <laughs> you know what made me think of kids is my, I heard mine running by. I was like, oh, kids, they're a happy topic. Let's hear. <laughs> they're hard. Um, well, that's why you and Jen, I don't know if you've noticed that Jen looks a lot younger than me, Ryan. It's because she doesn't have kids aging her <laughs> No, Alicia, I told you it's because black don't crack. That's why. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's inappropriate for me to say here in 2020, <laughs> even though you would know I would mean it with love. <laughs> Only four episodes in. We can't get. Well, here, <laughs> I'm giving you permission. You can say that. From now on, it's fine. <laughs> Jen, we can't You'll have kids, have Jen, soon. Give it, give it a year or two. White women calling me racist. We can't have the Lulu Lemon crowd. <laughs> okay. Um, Did you say I'm going to age when I have kids, Ryan? Is that what you just said? No, I didn't say that. I said, I said, <laughs> no, I heard you. I know you were trying I, to be slight. Like, <laughs> I, I said, you'll, you'll probably have some kids and you'll know what it's like in the next year. In the, in the next oh, few years. okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought you were saying that. To, the best of to you. be fair, I do have a black friend. Um, she is in her 50s, has three kids who are college age now. Met her, thought she was in her twenties. So Jen is not lying when she says this. It's true. Um, what 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 Jen's probably not telling you. She's probably got like ten kids, and you don't even know about it. <laughs> I just yeah, I just shut them all up for our podcast. I just put them all in the basement. It's fine. <laughs> she is out golfing a lot for a woman who has a lot of kids. Then. Oh, just like the men. Um, uh, so, Ryan, how, did the weather in South Africa play any effects on the filming? Is that is that what we're talking about now? We're talking about the weather. <laughs> yes, yeah, we're moving on. I <laughs> anything to get <laughs> us back on track. Okay. So, the, track. Weather, the, the weather was great here. It was lovely. You know, there's a bit. There was a bit of little wind over here, and then and we did have Hot some rain. Hot enough to kill a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Leave this podcast. It'll be really sad because I'm the one recording it. So we'll all be and Jen doesn't know how to do any editing. So really. Jen, why why are you even here? Why I know. Why are you here? I know. Well, I because just, she's beautiful and she has an amazing Jen's just sit, voice. <laughs> Jen's just sitting there cracking open a beer. She's yeah, got a I'm like, I on, just listen, know. basically. A white claw, because she wants to feel like a white woman. There you go. <laughs> Don't we all <laughs> county margaritas like they're going out of style? Happens to the best of us, John. Happens to the best of us. You're drinking seltzer like a white woman. <laughs> it's fine. Look, you guys didn't invent seltzer. Well, maybe you did. I don't know. You probably did. <laughs> But you know, I'm. No, you know, no, no, I'm sure you're in the fridge. You're judging me. Just so credit for it. Don't worry. <laughs> Look, I'm nursing a small hangover. I can't go too hard, okay? <laughs> well, I can go grab one of my Jello shots if that'll make me look better. <laughs> <laughs> if only if you're sending some of those Jello shots here. I've been with my father all day. Um, so Ryan, anything else you wanna share? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Anything done in the parade? I'm just trying to think of any other animals that have died. No! <laughs> don't think. Um, don't. The shark and jaws. Did any jaws really blew up? Okay, did, did they really like blend up the gremlins? Like, were the gremlins really <laughs> actually killed? So they were all uh, terminated. <laughs> all of them. Listen, so Gizmo was sitting on my dresser. He heard that. He's not a fan guy. <laughs> Think I, know. I still have my original gizmo that I got when I was like four years old. Oh, that's cool. He's a little worn for wear. I don't let my son play with him because I'm afraid we blew some stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Ryan. We interrupted you. Were you going to say something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Ryan's just I'm, I'm, I'm actually just boy, listening to you guys. I'm actually just this. listening to you guys. This should be just be the show with you guys just talking <laughs> the whole time. I'm oh, just kind of trying to edit you out a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just a fly in the wall. I'm just listening <laughs> to what, what, what's, what's going on. Uh, 
Good. This is good material. <laughs> You're coming up with some ideas, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Your inspo. I like it. Um, so. So kids, yeah, crazy, eh? Yeah. Um, Man, I, I I hear about them. I hear they're kind of a lot. Speaking about animal death, my, my kid did kill an ant today, so there's that. An ant. An ant. Not like some ants, just like one just, ant. Just one? He's strong. Did he just like torture yeah. like one ant? No, he didn't even torture it. He just like, he was reaching down for his water bottle and he squished it. <laughs> how, how, big was this, how big was this one ant? Like, Oh, our ants get pretty big. It, oh, I, no. It was like, it was outside. Probably about like a half an inch. <laughs> ant. I don't know. I don't know if you're like proud of them for killing the ant or like, or you, you, you yeah. don't know why was they it did it. Was it a fact, a fun fact, or was it like? No, he like reached down to pick up something and like, and, up an and the ant was part of like the collateral pickup damage. We were talking about animals getting killed. The poor ant. He was just chilling. Poor like, ant. just let's, let's, let's all just have like a five <laughs> seconds of silence. <laughs> Just for this ant for today. Just, just five I mean, he seconds. He was big enough. Holy yeah. hell. But, but what you, at least what you didn't know. Big ants where you are? Yeah, you know, of course. And there's also big ones. It was just the way he said it. It was just like, uh, they killed this one ant. It was just like one. Just like, like, like you pre like you hunted him down. Like it was that yeah. specific yeah. bastard ant. Like you see, at least what you didn't know was. A spider in our home that we're trying to hunt down. We've lost him. We've not yeah. been able to relocate. You see, Alicia, what what you didn't know was the ant was just probably went shopping, was just on his way back home to see his mom and dad, and then right now, you know, the mom and dad ants are sitting there now going, John. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, they're calling the ant there. police. The ant yeah. police won't answer him because it hasn't been twenty four hours, so they exactly. won't even go look you, for him yet. You can't class as a missing ant for at least forty eight hours. At yeah, least. yeah. No, I can see at that. Least. Um, but he's over 18, so it's going to be like 72 hours. Well, if he's, yeah, if he's over 18, it's probably going to be 72 hours. You're right. So maybe oh. there's no, there's no ant police outside knocking on your door or anything, anything like that. Not yet. But to be fair, I don't answer my door. There could be a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't you don't answer your, your door? door? You don't answer oh. your door? We did the same. <laughs> That's wait, awesome. Wait, are you guys telling me? If you're not expecting somebody at your house and you always get, expect the ant. Always <laughs> expect the ant. No, I do. And you get a knockity knock at your front door, you answer that? I mean I peek out the window first. The first I'll thing I do is open door up like it's not happening. And look down. <laughs> Wait, you open it and look down? Yeah, because there might be ants there, so you might oh. still <laughs> no, I, I saw where he was going with that. Do you guys not yeah. have, are, uh, Ryan, are Jehovah Witnesses a thing in South Africa that you need to be worried about? Uh, not so, not so much. Uh, in England, they fucking knock on your door every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day? Yeah, nearly every day. If you're home during the day, they will knock and they, oh. they will knock on your door. Yep, yep. Are you, so are you from England? Uh, originally, yeah. So oh, okay. I, I grew up in England, but I've lived here for uh, 11 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. He didn't sound like he was from England to you, John? I'm not, I'm not good. No, he did, but he's oh, in okay. South Africa. So I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm sure he's from England. Like oh. that. No, I don't assume things because then I sound <laughs> stupid. So oh. <laughs> I assume everything. It's how I've gotten through these 38 years of my life. And this is why we compliment each other. You do the assuming. And I say it with such a high <laughs> level of authority that even if the fact is completely like, wrong, by the time you're done with me, you're like, <laughs> you're like maybe I am from, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I yeah. was like, no, I grew up in South Africa. I'm like, no, no, you're from England. <laughs> no, yeah. don't worry about it. Conversation. Yeah. I think you grew up in the UK, that he's friends with Harry and William. <laughs> They're like, maybe I am just from South Africa. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, who knows? What made you make the move to South Africa? Uh, it was, uh, so I can't even take this seriously now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's over. <laughs> oh, I just uh, it. Ryan, where can they find you? 
Um, no. Sorry, what, what was the question again? <laughs> the question again? How, how did you I end up? Like how did you kill the podcast? And now we're trying to recuperate. <laughs> so, there's that. It's taken such a turn. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Jen, try to get what? us back on track here. Ryan, what made you move to South Africa? <laughs> I moved to South Africa because. Uh, Work was just good. It was good here. Every time I came here on holiday, I ended up getting work. So I oh, decided. work. I thought you were going to say something else. No, it was no horses, no ants. It was just it was <laughs> work. Oh, no. We and assumed then, you were going to say pussy. We assumed <laughs> pussy. You, are you going to say you were, getting, you were getting it on or something? I was like, okay. I was getting it on. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I should just get it on all the time in South Africa and not in England. There so you I just decided to move. Listen, I've oh seen God. South African women, Charlie Serum. Oh, right. If they all look like her, I say yes. <laughs> Go for it. Do that more. Yes. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of beautiful women in South Africa. The women are uh, the women are very beautiful here. Yeah. Where? Uh, let's see. The imperialism really keeps them open night. What? No history? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I don't participate in history. <laughs> oh, okay. Whew. Whew. Well, it's been a, it's been a good chat, guys. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't yeah, even know where to go now. Okay, fine. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just wrap this up. Yeah. Let's just wrap. Yeah. No, we're wrapping yeah. now. Um, where can they find you? <laughs> they can find me in South Africa. <laughs> in Cape Town. Uh, where all the where all the ladies are in Cape Town. <laughs> Lots of ants, <laughs> lots of horses <laughs> here as well. All all alive horses. They're not dead. They're all alive. Uh, you can find uh, um, me on uh, uh, RyanKruger.tv or FryBarry.com. You can check uh, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, just type in Ryan Kruger or Fry Barry, and you'll be able to find me there. <laughs> okay. As always, everyone. I'm not even sure we're gonna get Jen back at this point. She might pissing her yeah. pants there i don't i can't really tell um but uh yeah you can always find us at horror and heels at gmail.com on instagram on facebook on the twitter we'll be we'll post the fried berry uh, trailer on our facebook page so you can check it out instagram uh-huh and uh this will come out we're recording on Labor Day in the States, and it'll come out on Friday after I do a little tweaking to this, or a lot of tweaking, I'm well, not sure. By the time they hear it, it's going to be out. Yeah, I think you should just leave it as it is. <laughs> no <laughs> editing. All this prime content, including, it's, like, my big sips of drinks. It's fine. I was I was gulping the claws. You saw that. I, I was just chugging. It's fine. But this, is, this is what makes good interviews. Like, it was fun. It was, yeah. fun. it was fun. Yeah. You were yeah. having a good time. You were actually a pretty awesome first guest. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah you were our fun. first guest. Yes. Um, and I was laughing last night because I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts, The Gilmore Guys. They had their first guest for episode four. And we have our first guest for episode four. Same yeah, thing. buddy. That's exciting. Yeah. So that is all. Yeah. Sorry, um, sorry about the horse. The horse let down. That's Damn it, it. Ryan! We almost got out of here without reminding. We're out, you. like we're almost out. Without they reminding. Me. Like a, you're like a multi-level level marketing company. Just <laughs> back into that. When, when you make a when you make a poster for this episode, it needs to be a picture of me and then a picture of the horse stuck in the mud. No, wait. We'll Photoshop you in so it looks like you're pulling the exactly. horse. Yeah, exactly. we'll figure out how to do that. Jen, you're on that. I don't know how to do that kind of thing. <laughs> I, can, I, I don't know. I don't know if we can rely on Jen with this one. I don't know, Alicia. I don't know. <laughs> we are. I don't know. Jen, I think, is it because white claws? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait till she sobers up, but yeah. I can trust well, her. That's going to happen. Look around. Look right, around. yeah. I forget. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thanks, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, much appreciated. We hope you had a good time with us. I know it's yeah. midnight where you are at this point, so go get some rest. Yeah, I'm going to watch a movie now. Oh, yeah. What movie are you going to watch? I'm going to watch a never-ending story. Oh, 
Okay. On that note, good night, everyone, and have a <laughs> frightful Friday. Bye. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Yes.